G'day legends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Tony, that's the Mighty Jimny, and today we're down at Low Brook Dam, also known as uh, Lake Brockman, down here just south of Dwelling Up. So I finally got home after a long period away with work and finally back out camping, having a great time. So it's campfire season here in Western Australia. We're gonna have an awesome time, get the campfire going, cook up some good food. This time I'm down with a couple of mates from work. I've got Sam and Shamia. Uh, Shamia's the owner of the Blue Triton here, fantastic rig. Um, I've got a few other additions that I've done to the car. I've done a few videos lately in regards to things like the side body moldings, the new indicator lights and everything like that in the car as well. So check out those videos on YouTube. Um, and if you're a Jimny owner, hopefully they will help you out a little bit in the future. We are going to get the campfire going, get the camp area set up. Uh, Grab yourself a beer or a nice warm brew and we'll do all the hard work. Enjoy. Mostly set up at the moment. Um, all I'm going to do now is break for five minutes, uh, have a beverage, and then um, what I'm going to do is a quick review on the um, Oz10 RS1 king size uh, quick setup swag and the RS1 stretcher that goes with it. So, this was something I mentioned in one of the previous uh, videos in regards to. Um, uh, in regards to the different swag options that I was looking at. Uh, the main reason why I've gone with this one is just because the ease of setup helps me out a little bit. Um, and also I really wanted the idea of a uh, of a stretcher. Now the thing with the stretcher is it keeps you up off the ground and everything. But I'll cover all of that in the review. Um, it's probably going to be a separate video so um, look out for that one when it comes out and uh, yeah. But uh, once I've done that then we're going to finish setting it up. Um, and I didn't bring the side awning uh, for a reason today. What I'm going to try and do is actually set up, so the RS1 Swag has its own little uh, awning, which is pretty cute, but one of the things that I want to do is actually try and see if I can actually attach it to the main awning of the, uh, of the campsite. So that way I can actually use the awning for um, the side awning, for more of a, like a windbreak or something like that, rather than having to put it over the top of the other swag. Uh, so yeah, having a quick look at the campsite, it's looking pretty good already, got the double burner out, we're going to get the campfire going in a second, uh, and then we're going to cook up some snags uh, for lunch, which will be really good actually, because I could eat my own head. Alright, enjoy, um, and we'll uh, we'll see you in a second, cheers. What you doing here Sam? Uh, I've just cooked these, um, I'm not sure what they're called, but they're pretty fancy, they're, I've ripped it perfectly, Angus beef caramelised onion sausages. Oh, I've cooked them up on your double gas mate butane twin stove and um, mix them with a little bit of sauce and buttered bread that Shamir. Happy days. Up. Happy days, laughing. Mm. I personally prefer it with tomato sauce because I'm a little bit of a fiend for it. Cornerstone of every healthy lunch. <laughs> We're gonna uh, eat these and probably, it's almost beer o'clock I reckon. Yeah, it's definitely getting there. So we'll eat these and have a sherbet and then, uh, yeah, get that fire going. What do you mean? Beer clock started an hour ago. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've had, uh, had a bit of lunch and it's about 3 30, 4 o'clock now. Uh, it's getting a little bit cooler, which is good. So we've got the campfire going, which is fantastic. And we're just going to have a little bit of a walk down to the uh, down to the actual dam itself. This is an absolutely magic spot. We've come down here a few times now. We came down last year um, and around, must have been about November-ish uh, when we got back from a uh, deployment there and that was absolutely fantastic. 
um, and we've come back to a very similar spot but uh, yeah the water is absolutely magic a lot of uh, a lot of people come down here to do um, a bit of like water skiing and stuff like that um, and they also come down for a bit of a uh, bit of fishing a bit of marin fishing during the marin season um, and everything like that so it's very popular um, luckily however because we're down here on a Thursday and it's not the weekend uh, it's actually there's not that many people at all it's pretty, pretty secluded at the moment so uh, which is which is fantastic oh well so finally out for a bit of a camp big boy took a long time took a while so what do you reckon of this place I am a massive fan of Logue Brook. I think it is wicked to come here. The only thing that I can actually fault it on is its popularity. Too many people come here, I reckon, sometimes, and if you want a little a getaway, and sometimes you're into having a couple of beers and getting a little bit loud at night, this sometimes isn't really the, the place to be. But today, it's perfect. No one's around, beautiful scenery. You'll be as loud as you want. It's great, I love profit commenting about how much the water looks like it's actually gone down a fair bit and being a freshwater dam and gets used I'm pretty sure by water corp to, uh, to supplement the, the fresh water I and mean, you can see here just in, you know this here this area here was kind of underwater the last time we were there this rocky out right here was actually just just poking up I'm pretty sure so you can even see the ground's actually quite quite wet you can see where Shania is over there. I mean, you can see the erosion from the water that's usually at that level. Um, I mean, that's not full drive trains. People aren't driving. Yeah. yeah, it's a funny thing about Western Australia. We're a bit of a mercy of the rainfall sometimes. Um, but this time of year, um, when the rain actually does start, and coming out of it in about uh, late September, early October, when you start getting the, the spring warmth come through again, it is absolutely magic. Everything's nice and green. Um, it doesn't last too long because the rain usually stops around mid, uh, mid to early September and then by that stage things start to dry up and get brown. But there's about a month period where everything is absolutely beautiful and green and it's really, really nice. Okay. Perfect yeah. getting out into those uh, national park sort of areas and all that sort of stuff and where the uh, like Wellington Dam, things like that really start to blossom and really sort of show. Yeah, 100%. Anyway, stay tuned and uh, we're going to have a bit of a walk around and uh, a bit of an explore and then uh, sometime in the next couple of hours I guess we'll start doing dinner. So I'm going to do a, a really nice cabanara. I've been talking this cabanara up all day. Um, so I'm going to do a, a cabanara and I'll show you how to make it really easy and it is absolutely fantastic. Alright, enjoy. Okay guys, so we've been chilling out by the campfire. Um, it's crackling away there, nice and warm, so it's getting a little bit cooler, and we're starting to lose a bit of daylight now, so sun's just starting to set, so I thought it's about time to cook dinner. The, uh, the guys are gone for a bit of a walk, so it's given me an opportunity to uh, do a quick video on how I'm gonna do this uh, cabanara. Now, it's a pretty straightforward recipe. Um, I learned it a little while ago and uh, it's something that you can cook around the uh, the camp uh, campground quite easily. Now the ingredients that you'll need uh, is going to be just grab yourself a packet of bacon, give yourself a small packet of the par grated parmesan cheese, you'll need four eggs so you're going to be using four full eggs and one egg white, flat leaf uh, continental parsley, two cloves of garlic, some cream and you're also going to need your um, your pasta as well. Now I choose uh, large spiral pasta. The only reason why I choose large spiral pasta is because uh, when it comes to the sauce and everything like that with the cabanara, the large spiral picks up the sauce really well and it's really quite nice. So, so uh, first off what you're going to be wanting to do is dice up your um, your garlic, uh, your two garlic cloves there. So with the garlic cloves, um, it doesn't have to be too fine or anything like that. Um, it is camp food af after all. Um, and we're going to be putting those onto the pan and we're also going to be getting our, um, our bacon ready. So all I'm going to be doing with the bacon is I'm going to grab um, most of a uh, packet of bacon. So I'll probably say, what's that, four? Yeah, four rashes will do. I'm just going to cut those into cubes pretty quickly. Now that that's all chopped up, what we're going to do is just throw that onto the pan. I'm just going to leave that there. I'm not going to turn it on just yet. I'm going to get the rest of it ready. I've got my parsley here. So I've just grabbed a handful of the continental parsley. Um, and I'm just going to try and finally chop this up as much as I can. Now that we've got the parsley done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, um, the pot for the pasta. 
get that onto the boil. So I start boiling that, that one's there, is I'm gonna build, uh, use the four eggs. Now, what I said before was, so three full eggs, like that, make sure you don't get any shell in there. And then I'm just gonna do one egg white. So the way that you do that, crack your shell, your eggshell in half, and then you just plop it between the two there. But I off that bit the campfire. I've got my whisk, and I'm just going to whisk that up so it's all good. Alright, that's all whisked up. I'm just going to add that parsley straight to it. Stir that up a bit. Then I'm going to, so now this is a 300ml um, a little jar of thickened cream. Um, and I'm just going to add about a hundred mil, so about a third of one of these. There you go. With the parmesan, what I usually do is I add about three quarters of a cup straight to the um, straight to the the actual pasta sauce there, and mix that through. And then I throw a little bit of extra on top. All right, and there. All right, so you can see your sauce there. That's brilliant. All right, so the pasta water is uh, almost at the boil now, so it's steaming up nicely. So I'm just gonna add, um, now this is a seven, uh, sorry, 500 gram um, packet of a large spiral pasta, so I'm gonna add most of that in. Um, throw the pot lid back on, and while we're waiting, I'm just going to start doing this, uh, start doing this bacon. All right, so the bacon, uh, just let that sizzle away. Um, and once that's all cooked, what I'm going to be doing is then draining the pasta off, but I'm not going to be cooling it off or washing it off or anything. I want to be using the heat that's left in that pasta um, to actually stir through and cook the sauce a little bit. So what I'll be doing is the, once that pasta is cooked up and once this bacon's cooked up, I'll be then adding the bacon into the pasta. And then once that's stirred through a bit, then I'll be adding the sauce and give it a bit of a whisk first. Adding the sauce and then uh, and stirring that through. And that is going to be a absolutely fantastic pasta carbonara really easy to do by the campfire um, and really uh, yeah really good nice warm meal as well so you can hear that bacon starting to, to sizzle up quite well already uh, I always put a touch more bacon in there than uh, than I need mainly because I end up kind of eating away at it a little bit as well so yeah just be careful uh, with the ash from the fire that it doesn't land in your bloody stuff but should be right all right so gonna go through cook that up let that boil up and we'll be back in a couple of minutes to then stir it all through mm. all right that is good to go so mm. I'm gonna turn that off now as you can see here on the summit lid, it's got this little um, uh, this little drain hole system over here. So what you do is you put that on, then you can go and drain that off. Now I'm just going to walk over here and drain that. I'm going to go drain this. So that's all drained off. Now, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, scoop the bacon and garlic into the. Uh, into the El Pastorino. Now I'm going to ask Sam's help here. Mate, do you want to come grab the camera for me? Yeah, right. So Sam's going to be, be my cameraman for a second. So come over here. If you just touch that screen as well, we'll be able to see what you're looking at. All right, so I've got here the pasta sauce. This is all nice and ready to go. Give it a good mix, all right? You want to make sure that the eggs and everything like that are really nice and mixed through. Now this is still popping hot in here and you're just going to put that straight in. All right, see what we're going here? That's just gonna go straight in there. Now, I'm just gonna move that over there. And then you're just going to mix all of that through. And you can already see all the steam coming off that. That is going well. Now what I usually like to do is just throw it back onto the, uh, onto the heat just for a couple of seconds, just to stir it through and make sure it's nice and well warmed through. But that, already, look at this. And it smells, Seemingly. smells amazing. Look at that, that, that's carbonara baby. Look at that, nice and creamy. All right, so let's quickly pop that back on there. Gonna stir it through. 
make sure now you don't want to be stirring it through on the heat very uh, very for very long at all because what will happen is your the eggs will start to scramble and you don't want that you just want them warmed through enough that they're uh, no longer raw and you'll hear it starting to sizzle a bit that's when you've had enough turn her off all right that is fantastic -o. all right let's spoon these out to everybody i'm probably gonna make a mess of this What do you reckon, mate? That looks great. <laughs> Doing our best to make this as family as friendly as possible. Alrighty. Look Let's at that. It. How much do you want, Chair? Um. I'll just. You know what? Yeah, it's not, it's yes. not like we're taking it home, mate. So I'll just spoon it all out. Exactly. If you don't need it all, I'm sure Sam will. All right. Look at that. Then. There's a final little bit, tiny little bit of parmesan over the top. Happy days. All right, there you go, mate. Uh, so, cabanara, ready to go. We are going to get stuck into uh, a couple of beverages and uh, some cabanara, have some some beers. I'm, I think I'm on the Jack Daniels tonight, actually. So, yeah, ran the campfire, and we're even going to throw a couple of those little coloured uh, campfire jobbies into the, into the fire. So, all right, give it a go. Come on, give it a go. <laughs> Just kidding. Killing me. I like it. It's very nice. Pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice. That's delicious, man. That's awesome. Alrighty. Well, I'll put that in the main column. That's spot on. Mm. That is actually so good. Stucco in the heat Let me take you dancing Let me get you on your feet Arizona garden With my little cactus flower Let the day slip away In the golden hour We've got nothing But time and you And a sweet cold drink in the heat Oh, I'll be beside you Every step of the way Right here beside you Every step of the way Prickly pear in a sandy Holding you heals me But loving you hurts my head Oh, Arizona gardens in the afternoon No matter what happens It's me and you, baby Nothing but time and music And a sweet cool drink on her feet Late. Uh, it was cold, but I slept actually very well. That new Darcy swag was the most comfortable sleeping arrangement I've had in 
camping ever. In 30 years and I'm only 25. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. We're going to get a little uh, little campfire going this morning to try and warm the hands up. Um, someone's bashing with their land cruiser pretty early. Um, I was woken up by the, the magpies that had decided to uh, visit the campsite and get stuck in a leftover bits of cabanara that we left. So, uh, yeah, um, don't leave your cabanara out. Magpies go burko over it. So we'll start the campfire and I reckon it's a, almost about time to uh, make some of those bacon and egg rolls, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, 100%. Breakfast All right. <laughs> there you go, bacon eggs, little roll, bit of onion, bit of barbecue sauce, that's the way to go. That is the way to go. Mm. That's amazing. That's delicious. Oh yeah. You'd pay for that. Right guys, so we've had our breakfast, a couple of bacon and egg rolls. Um, really, really nice. So we're gonna start packing up the campsite after we've had a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. Um, once we're done that, we'll start making our way back to civilization. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, this has been a really good little overnight getaway and we've got a few more planned. So hopefully with any, uh, with any luck, we'll be able to get out there a few times before I have to go away for work again. All right, thanks again. Uh, don't forget, like, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit that notification bell so when my content comes up, it will notify you straight away. And yeah, stand by. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.